Hi guys, welcome back to Oily Skin Diaries week day seven. Yes, we have done seven foundation reviews in seven days. I hope you have enjoyed this series. We're going to be uh, capping it off with a very Instagram, YouTube famous foundation. We are talking about the Dermacol foundation, which is said to be one of the most highest coverage foundations out there. I will link to my previous six foundation reviews down below, and I will also have timestamps there if you're curious to see specific points in this review. Let me know if you would like to see a roundup of all the foundations. I can chat a little bit more about them along with a few other foundations that I've reviewed lately, just to kind of not necessarily put them in order from best to worst, just to kind of give you uh, some more further thoughts now that I've had time to test out the foundations a little bit more. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. This foundation became quite popular. I'm not totally sure how. Somewhere on the internet and social media world, people started using this because of its claims of extremely high coverage. To me, it doesn't seem like this is the kind of thing that you would wear every day. It's more for tattoo cover-ups, if you have scarring, or anything that is quite extreme on your skin, but it doesn't really seem like the kind of thing that's super easy easy just to throw on. I haven't actually tested this out, so this is kind of a first impressions and I'm kind of terrified. I picked mine up at IMATS Toronto. Looking online, it seems like you can get it on Amazon.com. You can also get it on the Dermacol website and a few other avenues. And depending, of course, where you are, it may be a different price. It looks like anywhere in between $20 and $35, depending on where you're picking it up. There is a 30 grams in the package, which is the average size of a foundation, and it comes in 12 different shades, which seems good at a glance, but when you actually look at the shades that are available, not only do they look super pink and gray, uh, but they do not go deep at all. I'm actually using the deepest shade in 224. So this foundation it claims to be waterproof, hypoallergenic, SPF 30, good for all skin types, and extreme full coverage. And I definitely have some breakouts on my skin. I don't feel like I need extreme full coverage, but you know, here we are to test it out. I think that the color match is going to be super bad, so let's go ahead and get into application. So here's the foundation on my hand. It's incredibly, incredibly thick. I have primed this half of my face with a mattifying primer. I'm anticipating using my hands, sponge, brush, just to see what works best. I'm gonna dot it on my skin. For some reason, this foundation like scares me. I don't know what it is. Let's try a brush. And I, oh yeah, it's so red. Um, I'm assuming a little bit will go a long way. I probably put out too much. Oh yeah, wow. Okay, a little bit does go a long way, but it does blend out easier than I thought. I get really scared with these kind of like moussey textures. So I'm just looking up a little bit closer and I gotta say it blends out really nicely. I was expecting it to be patchy and hard to blend, but I'm, I gotta say I'm initially pretty impressed. So I'm just gonna blend out this side. I'm actually just gonna stick with the brush. I thought I might have to play around a little bit. Definitely go in with super light layers. And so far it doesn't feel heavy. So maybe this is something you could wear more often. Maybe I'm just a big liar. <laughs> Shouldn't be making assumptions where I've tried it. So I gotta say, um, so far so good. I'm pretty impressed that, first of all, that the color match, I mean the color match is a little bit orange, but in person it looks pretty good. It's easy to blend, doesn't feel heavy on the skin, and it definitely is quite full coverage. I'm not gonna build it up anymore. So I'm already scared about how this is gonna do on oily skin. But, looks good, it looks smooth on the skin. So I've given it just a couple minutes to set, maybe two minutes, and it definitely does not feel tacky on my skin at all. If you have normal to dry skin, I don't think you'd need to set this. There definitely is still a little bit of glow to my skin, but I'm surprised at how um, set it feels. I am definitely still going to powder as I do have oily skin, but I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of my makeup, see how it looks in photos, and then I will be right back. Now that I have the rest of my makeup on, I'm incredibly impressed and surprised. I'm filming this review on a day where I had absolutely nowhere to be on purpose because I was scared that it was just going to look a mess and I wasn't going to want to be seen in public, but it looks really good. It looks incredibly smooth on the skin, which I wasn't expecting, the prime side even more so, but it looks good. It doesn't look cakey. It is a beautiful coverage, really nice finish. 
I'm really, really surprised. So in photos, when I was just wearing the foundation here in my lighting, I thought it looked good. It has a bit of a natural sheen to the skin, but doesn't look greasy or shiny. Then with flash photo, even though there's SPF in here, I thought that it turned out pretty nice. There is a little bit of a cast, but nothing super intense. And then when I have the rest of my makeup on, I thought that it looked great as well. So far, I've got to say I'm pretty impressed with how this is looking, but we will have to test how it holds up throughout the day before I can really give you my final thoughts, but I mean, I'm shocked. I'll check back with you for a midday check-in. It's time for my midday check-in. I am definitely looking oily, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of blotting um, using tissue because I can't find my blotting sheets. But um, the color of this is definitely off for my skin tone, I think. It doesn't look too bad here now, but um, Otherwise, it looks quite good, I must say. Uh, it doesn't feel super heavy on my skin, especially considering the claims of it being so full coverage and having that extreme full coverage, which is scary. So yeah, it's holding up really well. It definitely has been oily for about three hours now. I held off on blotting so that I could do it during this midday check-in, but I probably would have blotted about two, three hours in, but that being said, nothing has patched off and the side that's primed is performing a little bit better than the unprimed side, but I will check back with you now that I have a blotted and powdered at the end of the night to see how this performs. Here we are at the end of the day and I am super shiny, so I'm gonna get straight into blotting. Um, I will say though that it hasn't like really patched off my skin much, a little bit around my nose, but it has held up um, actually on my face quite well considering how oily I am, um, but it has started to look cakey because there is so much oil coming through on my face. Moving on to a little bit of powder. I don't feel like it's oxidized and it definitely didn't catch on to like any texture on my skin or anything like that. It did look quite smooth and the mattified side, uh, mattifying primer side did end up a little bit more matte than the unprimed side. So those things for me are definite positives, but in general for me, I don't think this is gonna be something that I'm gonna be reaching for a ton or that I would repurchase if I ran out of. It definitely lived up to the claim of being quite full coverage, but for me, it's just not something that I'm super excited about. I feel like if you have maybe normal to dry skin, this may work better for you just for longevity's sake. But if you do have something that you're looking to cover on your face, I think that's something, and you're oily, something like the Estee Lauder Double Wear or the Becca Ultimate Coverage Foundation. Those are both really, really high coverage and hold up much better on oily skin. If you're looking up, looking to cover up like a tattoo or something, I think this could totally work or something on the body. I haven't tested that out, but it definitely does seem like that's something that it's really good for. So it impressed me a lot more than I, than I was expecting. I was expecting this to be a horrible mess. I mean, I did get quite oily, but the foundation itself as a foundation seemed to perform really nicely. It looked smooth on the skin, didn't oxidize, didn't patch away too much or anything like that, but my skin is quite oily and it just doesn't have that mattifying property that I'm looking for and it didn't really market itself as having that either. So I'm glad that I finally tried this super hyped up foundation. Let me know if you have tried it down below. And if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at SamanthaJMYT. Thank you so much for watching Oily Skin Diaries Week. You're going to be missing me for one day. And then of course I will be back for my Tuesday video. I will see you then. Bye.